The way to stay out of deception is to develop a relationship where you trust someone more than you trust yourself. I need to say that again. The only way to stay out of deception is to learn to trust people more than you trust yourself. Because the nature of deception is you don't know you're deceived. Let me say that again. The nature of deception is that you don't know you're deceived. How many of you know that if you know you're deceived, that's not called deception? It's called the spirit of stupid. And we've all had the spirit of stupid on us before. But the nature of deception is you don't know you're deceived. Are you following me? That's why it's called deception. You don't know you're deceived. If I'm deceived, when you say that to me, it doesn't feel real. Are you? There's an elephant in the room. Everybody around you knows it. You're the only one who doesn't know it. When somebody comes and tells you about the elephant that's in your room, if you're deceived... It doesn't feel real. That's how you know you're deceived. It doesn't feel real. Wow. One day, I, I was, uh, Danny came into my office and said, I'd like to talk to you for a couple minutes. And I said, okay, have I told you this story? That you remember? So he said, I'd like to talk to you for a couple minutes. He said, I, have a, I actually have a, a, a counseling appointment in 10 minutes. So this is, I'm only going to have 10 minutes to tell you. And you fly out tonight. So I don't want this to go any longer. So I'm going to just tell you and then you just work it out. I'm like, well, all right. So we sat down together, and he goes, okay, well, for the sake of time, here's the struggle. He said, you've you got arrogance and pride on your life. Okay, so is there anything else going on you'd like to talk about? <laughs> I said, okay, so that doesn't feel true. I said, that doesn't feel true. He said, and so I said, so I'm going to need some examples. He says, okay, so he gives me four examples from... The, from uh, the last two months where arrogance and pride had manifest itself in meetings that he was in with me. And I'm like, every, all four of those times, I, I, I had ex reasons why I behaved like that. And so I said, well, you know what? I just, I don't agree with you. And he said, well, listen, I don't have time to argue with you. I got 10 minutes and now I got no minutes and so that's my word to you. I'm like, oh crap, okay. So I went home that night and I thought about it and, the, and I'm laying in bed and I'm thinking about it. Now I have a high value for Danny. I have a high value for the men and women that I've invited to speak into my life. I don't invite everyone to speak into my life. I think a whole bunch of what happens in my life is really none of your business. But I definitely need somebody who's, it is business. So, you know, so I went to bed that night, and as probably you can imagine, because he is a very powerful person in my life, I was pretty discouraged. I was like, okay, here's the most discouraging part. He thinks that I, that I am uh, arrogant and prideful and that I've let it grow in my life in the last two months, and I don't see it. Like, it doesn't feel true. Like, I, I'm, I'm pretty good at going, I'm really sorry, what do I need to do to clean up my mess? But the truth is, I didn't see it. Like, I thought, he's wrong. And so I'm laying there, and um, I, hear the, I hear the Lord say this to me very clearly. He said, you know, if you don't trust someone more than you trust yourself, then you can't get out of deception. I said, Lord, I, I said that. He said, yes, you did. That feels like an echo rather than a voice. So, so that's what the Lord said to me. And I, so I said, so I asked the Lord, I said, well, is Danny right? He said, if you don't trust someone more than you trust yourself, you can't get out of deception. That's what he said. He didn't say yes or no. He just said, if you don't trust someone more than you trust yourself, he repeated it to me three times. You can't get out of deception. And so I'm sitting there, and with everything in me, I'm thinking, he's absolutely wrong. Like, I don't mind being wrong, but I'm not wrong. Not in this incident. And, you know, he mentioned four different times once in staff meeting and, and three different meetings we were in with separate leaders. And I'm like, he's absolutely wrong. Like, I, do, I, I, I recount this, our conversations and everything. I can remember them. It was just a couple months. And I'm like, I, I didn't feel anything in me that was arrogant or prideful. I just don't think he's being, I don't think he's accurate. And so the Lord says, well, you know, if you don't trust him, I said, I get it. I understand. I've heard, the, heard that message before. 
So I laid there, and this is a true story. I laid there at night, and I had this thought. Okay? Right now, I have to make a choice. Because it is true that if I'm deceived, then what he shares with me won't feel real. Which, that's one of the symptoms I have. It doesn't feel real. So, it is possible that I'm deceived because it doesn't feel real. And I have 20 five years with this man and this man loves me and he cares about me and he's been very accurate in my life as I I think I have in his and so he would not tell me this to hurt me like he would have so I walk myself through this like he has no motive to hurt me he's been one of my very best friends in life we've done life together we've gone through hell together we've gone to heaven together we've we've done everything together he, so he would have no motive to try and hurt me and it wasn't arrogance and pride against him. Like, he didn't feel like I was being arrogant or prideful against him. So he has no, he, he has, he has no, there's no conflict of interest here. He doesn't have a problem with me and him. So, so I'm thinking through this, so I'm like, okay, all the symptoms are there that I actually have a problem. That's hard to believe, I know. I understand how stunning it must be on your end. <laughs> So I said these simple words. I prayed this simple prayer. I said these simple words to the Lord. I said, I choose to believe that Danny's right, even though it doesn't feel true. That's what I said. Wow. I'm laying there, and it's uh, no feeling. I have no emotion. I have no feeling. There's no God moment. There's, no, there's nothing besides I make a choice of my will to choose to believe him, even though it does not feel true on any level. Except for, except for I can rationalize that he's my friend and that he wouldn't lie to me. And that he has nothing to gain by talking to me. So I said to, my, I said to God, I choose to believe that Danny's right and I am wrong. Immediately, maybe a half a second went by, and immediately I saw each one of those circumstances and I saw my arrogance and my pride in every circumstance and I broke down and I started weeping in bed and I'm like, oh my God, I made such a fool out of myself. The second before I prayed that prayer, I could not see it. I did not pray that prayer because I was broken or because I thought he was right, but only because I knew the principle of, uh, of coming out of deception was true. As soon as I acknowledged that and said to the Lord, I will do what Danny tells me to do because I believe in him. And so I acknowledge that Danny's right, even though it doesn't feel true. As soon as I said it, instantly, it was like someone took dark glasses off my eyes and I revisited those four times that he talked about and I could see my heart in those instances and in my own self where I was right there. And I'm like, there is arrogance and pride growing in my heart and I never saw it. And instantly, I just started to weep, and I probably wept through most of the night. And I got up the next morning, and I, um, uh, I think it was a few days later, within a week, within seven days, um, we had a staff meeting. I, I asked Bill if I could have a minute with the staff, and I said, you know what, um, three weeks ago we were in staff meeting, I made this statement, it's totally arrogance in my, on my part, would you forgive me? And, you know, it was a pretty emotional moment. And all the staff were like, we totally forgave you, forgive you. Um, Bobby Connors was one of the people that I was arrogant with. I wrote Bobby a letter that, that same day. Bobby, we were together, in a, and I made a certain statement. And um, I just want to tell you that I was totally wrong. That was totally arrogance on my part. I am really sorry. He wrote me back and said, I didn't see any arrogance on you. But I totally forgive you. And I had to go visit the other two people that Danny mentioned and sit with them and, and humble myself. You know, if you humble yourself a couple of times, it kind of keeps you from being arrogant. If you know what I mean.